Why did the beautiful woman suddenly mutate? The latest release of the 2020 for Korean version of Parasite. On a calm night, countless alien spores landed on Earth, and alien insects crawled out one by one from them. These small creatures sensed the presence of humans. They crawled along the iron frames to the backstage of a music festival venue. One of them crawled into the ear of a long-haired man. The man convulsed and his pupils started spinning madly. Then he walked into the crowd. His girlfriend tried to stop him, but the man's head exploded like a carnivorous plant. Fleshy tentacles directly sliced his girlfriend apart. The music festival venue turned into a slaughterhouse for the parasitic creatures. However, this was just the beginning. The next day, inside a supermarket, Cashier Suin encountered a troublesome customer. He bought meat without weighing it and asked Suin to settle the account. The surrounding customers heard his shout. They whispered and glanced at him. The male customer felt embarrassed and quickly left. Suin was used to such situations. She finished her shift as usual. Little did she know that male customer followed Suin after work and stacked her multiple times by the roadside. Suin covered her wounds and walked into a field and then passed out. A spore fell near her. The male customer didn't let go Suin as he approached her but was cut in half by a parasitic creature. Shortly after, a truck passed by. The driver saw the accident scene and called the police in a hurry. The police found the case process strange after investigation. The male customer wielding a weapon was sliced in half from the chest to the face. However, the victim only suffered minor injuries. Even the stab wounds healed, leaving only a few shallow scars. The police speculate that the male customer was possibly torn apart after being tripped but the exact details await the autopsy results. The old police chief heard the victim's name, Suin. His face suddenly became grave because he knew this young girl. Suin had been abused by her father until she was 10. Fortunately, the old police chief saved her. Suin might have been killed by her biological father. That's why she remained calm about the stabbing incident and appeared very composed. After all, she had been unlucky since birth. Suin was just curious. She remembered being stabbed severely before fainting. Why did those wounds disappear? Several months later, the influence of the parasites had spread everywhere. Kamu disguised himself as a nightclub waiter, preparing to assassinate a gang leader. As a result, he failed to kill him in one strike and attracted the gang leader's henchmen. Kamu immediately fled through the back door. He took refuge at his sister's house. His sister had a brain tumor and had been living with their younger sister, Jen He. Kamu noticed that Jen He had come home late at night. So he asked his older sister where she had gone. 갔어, 멀리. 멀리 어디? 몰라, 나도. Kang Wu felt that his sister was acting strange, but he didn't want to ask too many questions. He wanted to call Jen He, but the number was temporarily out of service. Kang Wu was in Jen He's room. He found a pamphlet for a newly joined church. Meanwhile, a car was speeding on the road at night. The man in the car was very happy. He had a date with a beautiful woman today. He had planned to spend the night at a hotel, but unexpectedly, the woman was very proactive. She invited the man to her house. The building where the woman lived was in a very dilapidated state. There was even a layer of plastic sheen on the floor. The man was about to ask where the bathroom was. However, several men and women walked in. After sizing up the man, they expressed discontent. This guy has had too much to drink. It will probably take some time for him to metabolize alcohol. The man thought he encountered a scan. He took out his phone to call the police. Suddenly, the woman's face split open and lunged at him. Luckily, at that moment, a flashbang was thrown in. The man took advantage of the chaos and escaped, but the parasitic woman chased after him relentlessly. Fortunately, a group of armed forces arrived, start hunting down the parasite gang. These monsters transform into humans to do evil deeds. Seeing their comrades getting caught, a parasite wearing a suit jumped downstairs, instantly transforming into human form. He passed through an alley preparing to escape, but then he heard the voice of his kind. He opened a roadside carriage. He found a fellow parasite being restrained by the police. It seems he had led the police to this location. In the next moment, a short-haired woman with a gun approached and attacked. The man didn't engage in combat and hurriedly fled. This short-haired woman is named Choi jun Kion. She is the leader of the Grace Wan strike team. This team was established to eliminate parasites. Captain Choi returned to the crime scene to investigate. She directed her subordinates to break open a locked door. They discovered the food stored by the parasites. There were strange symbols painted on one side of the wall. 
The patterns match the church pamphlet Kamu found. The parasite organization has started to take shape. Since the last accident involving Suin, she has been taking the bus to work. On this day, shortly after Suin got on the bus, she suddenly felt a sharp pain in her head. Then the bus stopped. A man approached. He stared at Suin without looking away. Feeling scared, Suin got off the bus early. In the evening of that day, Kamu's older sister received a phone call. She learned that the organization had found a new member of their kind. She hung up the phone and went out. Unbeknownst to her, Kong Wu was secretly monitoring. At that moment, the bus Su and took arrived at the station. She had just gotten off when she saw the man from the bus. Su and took out her phone to contact the old police chief. But unexpectedly, the man suddenly rushed towards her. She quickly turned around and ran away. Little did she know, Kong Wu's older sister ambushed her from behind. The two of them, one in front and one behind, cornered Su and they revealed their true forms. The latter no longer disguised themselves, but Suin was different from typical parasites. Only one side of her head would turn into a tentacle. Kung was scared and hid in the shadows. The man returned to human form. He handed Suin a church pamphlet, asking her to consider joining the organization. We can only survive by working together. Kung Wu saw his sister leaving and prepared to slip away. Unexpectedly, he was caught by Suin. The parasite initially intended to kill him to silence him, but upon second thought, she asked Kong Wu to deliver a message, and the recipient of the message was Suin. After the parasite's features disappeared, Suin regained cautiousness. She had no recollection of what had just happened. Kong Wu relayed the parasite's words to Suin. A few days ago, when you were attacked by a male customer, an extraterrestrial larva burrowed into your body. Normally, it would have consumed your brain, but Suin was severely injured at the time. The larva was busy healing its host. As a result, it didn't have time to consume the entire brain, which resulted in Suin becoming a mutant. Kong Wu also told her, the creature inside you is called Heidi. After Kong Wu finished speaking, he left, leaving Suin with lingering doubts. She wrote down all her questions in a notebook. To her surprise, when she woke up, Heidi had filled it with answers. From the contents of the notes, it was revealed. Parasites rely on the host for sustenance, so it needs to protect Suin. Since Heidi failed to consume the brain, it can only take over Suin's brain which is in danger, and the occupation cannot exceed 15 minutes. Because parasites can sense each other, Heidi instructed Suin to conceal her mutant identity. On the other side, the old police chief and all colleagues were called by superiors to attend a briefing on the special investigation team. That's when everyone learned about the existence of parasites. Captain Choi provided a detailed introduction to these parasitic creatures. They undergo mutation by devouring human brains. The human consciousness is also fully absorbed by the parasitic organism. The fully mutated parasites have cannibalistic desires, can freely change the shape and hardness of their heads. They are sentient and independent life forms. Once these parasitic creatures leave the human body, they will desiccate and die. To defeat them, one must destroy the human body and cause the host providing nutrients to perish. Therefore, compared to regular bullets, shotguns are more suitable for attack. Captain Choi also taught everyone how to identify parasites. The hair of the parasitized individual will quickly wither once detached from the scalp. The reason why the great team has so much information is also thanks to Captain Choi's husband. The parasite locked in the carriage. The parasite can utilize brainwave-like signals to detect the presence of nearby similar parasites. Captain Choi didn't kill her husband. In order to locate the parasites, she refers to her mutated husband as Hound. To prevent the Hound from escaping, the Grey team designed special helmets that can release chemicals to make parasites afraid. Due to Namil County, where the old police chief is located, the most parasites have been detected. Thus the Grey team will be stationed here. The old police chief, upon hearing this, recalled the case of Suin. He believed this matter was related to the parasites. He went to talk to Suin, and incidentally pulled out a strand of her hair. Suin is currently just a mutant, so her hair wouldn't wither. Of course, the old police chief breathed a sigh of relief, but Suin suddenly felt a headache. She knew it was a signal of the appearance of her kind. The strange man stood at the door, observing Suin for a while, and didn't come forward. In the evening, Kyung he intercepted her path. She took Suin to the church. Because the priest learned that she could mimic humans, he became very interested in Suin. Meanwhile, the parasites were having a meeting. The priest said, 
the organization has received the latest information. The police have captured one of our kind to search for our location. They have also established a specialized strike force. The current situation is not optimistic. We are unable to reproduce. Therefore, in order to survive continuously, we also need to create organizations like humans do. At the same time, Kang Wu, in order to find his missing sister, also arrived near the church. He sneaked into a nearby warehouse. He discovered many corpses wrapped in plastic wrap. At that moment, a parasite came for patrol. It extended a tentacle with eyes on its head. Carefully searching every corner, Kang Wu tried to find an opportunity to escape but unexpectedly saw his sister's corpse. He instantly erupted in anger and disregarded everything. He rushed out and pounced on the parasite. The sounds of the fight reached the priest's ears. The parasites mobilized collectively to hunt down the invading human. Kamu couldn't defeat the patrol guard. He looked for an opportunity to escape the warehouse. He ran into the nearby forest. Unexpectedly, the leader failed assassination appeared. Kamu was caught in a pincer attack. He ordered the henchmen of the boss to leave quickly. But they didn't listen to his advice, insisting on courting death. Kung Wu took the opportunity to escape. He coincidentally encountered Suin. Kung Wu had already arranged for a friend to pick them up. He took Suin with him to rendezvous. The man sent someone fleeing. He transformed his head into wings and flew over to pursue them. At that moment, Kung Wu was driving away from the scene. He instructed Suin in the back seat to call the police immediately. But he was stopped by his good friend. This action was indeed quite strange. Kung Wu was very puzzled. How did the boss locate them? He realized it now. He had been betrayed by his good friend. The latter pulled out a knife and was about to stab him. The two of them struggled inside the car. The man has already arrived and starts attacking. Heidi takes control of Su Wen's body and engages in a fierce battle with the man. Kang Wu quickly turns and shakes off the monster. The car loses control and rushes down the hill. Fortunately, it gets caught by a tree. Heidi and the men are engaged in a fierce fight. The man doesn't understand why there are parasites helping humans. He quickly realizes that Heidi hasn't fully mutated. He wants to end the fight and report back to the priest. But just as the man takes off into the sky, he is killed by Heidi. When parasites are in complex transformation states like flying, their attacking power is almost zero. Meanwhile, Kamu regains consciousness. He tries to wake up his friend, but his friend's legs are trapped. Before his friend dies, he warns Kamu, it was our boss, Sundu, who sent me to kill you. Upon hearing this, Kamu no longer delays. He crawls out of the car first, but he exerts too much force and slips out of the car. In a critical moment, Heidi appears in time and pulls Kamu back onto the main road. Meanwhile, Captain Choi is browsing through the case files of Namil County. She notices the murder case of a supermarket employee. She deduces that Suen has been parasitized. Captain Choi's husband being parasitized is also related to the supermarket. That day, the couple had just finished shopping. They were preparing to drive back home. Captain Choi forgot to take the receipt. Receipts were required to avoid parking fees. She asked her husband to wait there. She went back to retrieve the receipt. It was at this moment that her husband was parasitized. He rushed into the supermarket and started killing people madly. He even cut off one side of Captain Choi's ear. Captain Choi realized the parasitized individuals were no longer human. She grabbed a bucket of powerful detergent and led her husband to the warehouse. That's how Captain Choi captured the first parasite. She still remembers all the details of that day. On the other side, after discussing with Suin, Kung Wu anonymously reported to the old police chief using a public phone. The Saajin church was filled with corpses and a pile of monsters with blossoming heads. Apart from that, for their safety, Kung Wu decided to stay with Suin temporarily. Heidi would protect them. So, Kung Wu pretended to be Suin's cousin and requested leave from the supermarket. The old police chief went to report to Captain Choi. Captain Choi was about to ask about the details of the attempted murder case in the supermarket. The old police chief explained he had already tested Suen. Her hair did not wither. He just received an anonymous report. Someone said, monsters have appeared in the Sajin church. Captain Choi originally thought it was just a prank. However, after seeing the symbol of the Sajin church, she set off with the great team. But the parasites are not fools. They had already moved their nest. If there were parasites nearby, 
the helm would press a button to send a signal. Captain Choi saw that there was no response, so she led the team inside to search. There was no trace of parasites inside. There were only a large number of refrigerated preserved corpses. The old police chief picked up Suen's key from the ground. He discreetly hid it in his pocket. Little did he know, Captain Choi noticed the old police chief's subtle movement. She began to suspect. The police later investigated that the Sajin Church was registered under a pastor named Kwon Hyuk Ju. He has been involved in church activities for 15 years. However, a few weeks ago, Kwon Hyuk Ju's wife's relatives reported that their daughter and son-in-law went missing. It seems that Pastor Kwon and his wife may have both been parasitized, or one of them consumed the other. Captain Choi decided to start with the pastor's residence and investigate the surroundings of the Sajin Church. Officer Johnson from the Namal Police Station said he would be in charge of searching the pastor's residence. This Johnson is a snob. If he took the initiative, there must be some issue. After the meeting ended, Johnson drove to the old warehouse. The pastor and others were waiting here. It turns out that Johnson is a parasite spy in the police station. Johnson mentioned the report. Kyun he guessed it was Kang Wu who reported, and judging from the wounds on the man's body, there must be others of the same kind helping Kang Wu. Now the important thing is to eliminate the hound, otherwise the organization could be exposed at any time. Because parasites have an interaction between their own kind, it's difficult for them to get close enough to assassinate the hound. The pastor handed a specially made dagger to Johnson to give him a chance to kill the hound. On the other side, the old police chief contacted Suen to ask about the keychain. They agreed to meet at the amusement park. Captain Choi sent someone to follow the old police chief. Johnson receives the news and rushed to the scene. At this time, the three of them met at the amusement park. Before Suen could explain about the keychain, Captain Choi caught up nearby. The hound immediately issued a warning. She got out of the car with a gun to inspect, and Suen also sensed the parasites approaching. She urged the old police chief to leave quickly, but the other party saw Suen's abnormal behavior and thought she was being coerced by Kung Wu. In the midst of the three-person argument, Captain Choi rushed out and aimed at Suen. In a critical moment, Kung Wu knocks down the old police chief. He takes Suen and escapes towards the rear of the amusement park. A large number of troops arrive. Captain Choi also catches up. Heidi takes control of Suen's mind. It instructs Kung Wu to run out and find a car first, after dealing with Captain Choi, and then meet up immediately. Kung Wu quickly leaves. As soon as he exits the amusement park, he sees Johnson stabbing the hound while chaos ensues. The hound presses the alarm before dying. Upon receiving the signal, she assumes there are other parasites nearby. She orders her subordinates to surround Heidi. If they can't capture her alive, they should shoot her on the spot. She goes near the hound to search for parasites. Yet Heidi cannot hold on for more than 15 minutes. She quickly faints. Captain Choi arrives near the police car and discovers her husband stabbed to death. She picks up the specially made helmet and runs back to put it on Suen's head. Kung Wu realizes the situation is not good. He can only escape from this place for now. After Captain Choi returns, she conducts x-rays and hair analysis on Suen. There are no signs of parasitic creatures on her. The old police chief wants to release Suen, but Captain Choi contradicts. She witnessed Suen's transformation. No distinctive features. Doesn't mean the person is normal. Perhaps Suen is a new variant. They argue incessantly. The leader decides to transport Suen to headquarters for a more detailed examination. The leader believes they can make the public aware of the existence of parasites to prevent rumors and misinformation or erroneous information online, leading to societal panic. They will study Suen carefully before disclosing information about the parasites. The transportation process will be commanded by Captain Choi. The old police chief is very angry. He immediately sends someone to investigate Kung Wu. They find the place where Kang Wu is hiding. The old police chief goes to interrogate Kang Wu. Kang Wu agrees to confess what happened, but he refuses to go back to the police station with him, because Kang Wu suspects that a monster disguised as a police officer killed the hound. The old police chief immediately denies it. He says the entire police station underwent x-ray scans, and there's no way a monster could have infiltrated. But Kang Wu did see someone kill the hound. The old police chief takes out a group photo from the police station and asks him to identify the culprit. Kung Wu recognizes Johnson. The old police chief's face turns serious. He asks Kung Wu to reveal what happened after encountering Suen. 
After the old police chief finishes listening, he prepares to rescue Suen with Kangwu. On the other side, Johnson informs the priest. He says the convoy transporting Suen will pass through Highway 39. The priest immediately sets off upon receiving the news. He also leaves a church symbol on the door. At the same time, Kang Wu also starts to take action. He enters the police station with the old police chief's access card. Then he sneaks into the second floor, where the gray team set a locker room. When the security guard changes shift, Kang Wu takes the opportunity to attack the guard and changes into the security guard's uniform. He enters the container where Suen is located. The old police chief reassures Kang Wu not to be nervous. The special task force was formed less than a month ago. The team members don't know each other. They won't realize he's an imposter. After successfully entering the container, Kang Wu must find the remote control for Suen's helmet. At this stage of the situation, everything has been going smoothly. Before he can get the remote control, Captain Choi takes it away before him. She also orders Kang Wu to keep an eye on Suen. Kang Wu is also locked inside the container. When the old police chief doesn't see him come out, he drives to catch up with the escort team. Unexpectedly, Johnson squeezed into the passenger seat, insisting on accompanying him. When the entire convoy reached Highway 39, suddenly encountered a heavy traffic jam. Captain Choi sent two team members down to investigate. They discovered the cause of the congestion was due to a traffic accident up ahead. The situation on this side quickly caught Captain Choi's attention. She guessed the parasites wanted to take Suen. She led her subordinates to chase after them. The old police chief also got out of the car to evacuate the crowd. However, the parasites kept increasing. The situation quickly spiraled out of control. A parasite drove a car and crashed into the container. Captain Choi ran over to stop it. She shot and killed the parasite with one shot, but the driver of the escort vehicle had already been killed. The out-of-control vehicle rushed forward. Captain Choi flipped over to avoid it. Kang Wu couldn't wake up Heidi inside the car compartment. He pushed open the door to check and discovered Captain Choi lying on the ground. He took the helmet remote control from her pocket. Kang Wu was about to go back to the car compartment to save Suen, but he was caught by Captain Choi in the act. At that moment, a parasite flung a car from a distance. Captain Choi, in order to avoid the car, released Kang Wu and dodged to the side. Kang Wu took the opportunity to pick up the remote control and rescue Suen. Captain Choi got up and tried to stop him. A parasite suddenly jumped out. She dodged to the side and picked up a weapon. She aimed at the parasite's head and fired a shot. To her surprise, after killing this one, more parasites came over. Captain Choi is too busy for herself. It gives Kang Wu a chance, but the remote control doesn't even have a label on the button. He doesn't know which one to press. At this moment, parasites open the carriage to attack him. At the critical moment, the old police chief in the distance fired a shot to cover up him. Wu was randomly pressing the remote control. Finally opened the helmet. He doesn't have time to explain. It was already too late when Captain Choi and Johnson found out. Johnson chased after an old police chief's car. He suddenly changed direction halfway through driving. And Suen sensed the same kind nearby. She was worried about the old police chief's safety. She asked Kong Wu to stop the car. Then, she ran towards the old police chief's direction. At this moment, Johnson had already revealed his true intentions. He had had enough of being a detective. He couldn't earn enough for his daughter's tuition. That's why he turned to the priest. Johnson also wanted to persuade the old police chief to join him. The priest emerged from the shadows. The old police chief fired his gun. At the moment, the priest fell to the ground. A monster crawled out of his body. It instantly severed the old police chief's head and took over his body. Suing was very saddened because the old police chief was the only person who cared about her. The two of them swung their tentacles. They fought from the open space into a nearby plastic shed. Johnson approached, holding a hand on. Before he could shoot, Kong Wu drove the car abruptly. He felt that Heidi was reaching her limit. He put Heidi and drove away. The parasite hadn't adapted to the old police chief's body yet, so it didn't catch up. Kong Wu took Su in and sought refuge with his friend, but the friend wasn't home. Fortunately, their relationship was strong enough. The friend sent the electronic lock password, allowing Kang Wu to enter on his own. Kang Wu used his sister's phone. The content of the text messages was monitored by Kyung Hee. On the other hand, the monster video from Highway 39 had already spread on the internet. The leadership immediately held a video conference. 
they decided to publicly acknowledge the existence of parasites and accept reports from the public. Due to the parasites in Amal County being different from parasites in other areas, they display similar organizational behavior to humans. Some leaders wanted to cancel the Korean Folk Music Festival. However, the problem is, this music festival is significant. It is not only the music festival for the opening of the Hero Memorial Hall, but also it involves tourist products throughout the entire county. And the mayor of Namjian C will also attend. This mayor is a presidential candidate. The Folk Music Festival is his last major event during his term. In short, after considering various factors, including the economy and politics, the higher authorities must ensure that the music festival takes place as scheduled. So the pressure fell on Captain Choi's shoulders. Superiors demanded her to eliminate the parasites in Amal County within three days. After the meeting ended, Johnson intercepted the parasitized old police chief. He presented Suen's X-ray examination results. Johnson couldn't understand why Suen didn't show any signs of parasitism. The old police chief realized she was a mutant but couldn't determine her form. At that moment, Kyung Hee called. She had found Kong was location. The old police chief warned Kyung Hee. That person named Suen is a mutant. Mutants have much stronger abilities than regular parasites. Meanwhile, Kong Wu and Suen have arrived at their friend Ji Suk's house. Kong Wu also borrowed some money from Ji Suk to find a place to hide with Suen. But Suen doesn't want to avoid the problem. She suggests contacting Captain Choi to find a way to gain her trust. They join forces to fight against the parasites and seek revenge for the old police chief. However, Kang Wu only wants to protect himself wisely. At this moment, the old police chief finds Captain Choi and informs her that he received a tip-off. Someone in the outskirts of Namo County has discovered a suspected parasite nest. The police have had an undercover team surveilling for several days, and they indeed saw a large number of suspicious individuals gathering at a warehouse with church markings. Captain Choi finds it strange. The parasite should know that the police are cracking down on the parasites in Namal County. Why aren't they leaving and organizing large gatherings? But the intelligence is solid, and coupled with Johnson and the old police chief surging by her side, Captain Choi makes the decision to launch a raid operation at dawn. As the evening falls, Suen takes the opportunity, while Kun Wu is asleep, and calls her confiscated phone. Captain Choi didn't expect Suen to reach out proactively. Suen says that Johnson and the old police chief are spies. Captain Choi doesn't believe Suen's words, as the police force recently underwent inspections. Captain Choi arranges to meet her at a cafe. Suen waits on the rooftop. They are separated by a large building. Suen admits she hasn't fully mutated, but coexists with the parasitic creature Heidi. While Captain Choi doesn't believe Suen, nor that the old police chief is a parasite, who has found a new nest of the church this morning. Captain Choi changes her approach. Come with us to raid the nest. A large group of soldiers surround Suen. They are holding that special helmet. Suen leaps and jumps off the building. Captain Choi immediately shoots at her. Kang Wu, who was looking for someone nearby, hears the gunshot. He rushes over to assist Suen. Suen is already being controlled by Heidi. She instructs Kang Wu to warn Suen for the next three hours. Don't get involved in any dangerous matters, because Heidi controls brain frequency too much. She has reached her limit. She will enter a state of deep sleep for the next three hours. After Heidi finishes speaking, she falls asleep. On the other side, Kang Wu's friend Ji Suk returns home from the gym. Kyoni comes to find him. Ji Suk knows Kang Wu's sister. He calls Kang Wu and tells him that his sister is looking for him. Upon hearing this, Kang Wu slams on the brakes. He quickly hints to Ji Suk to make up an excuse and leave. But it's already too late. Kyung Hee reveals her true form and snatches the phone. She threatens Kang Wu. If he doesn't show up within 15 minutes, she will cut Ji Suk's throat. The two of them return to the apartment. Suen enters Ji Suk's house alone. She intends to pretend to be Heidi and endure the next three hours. Unluckily, Kyung Hee sees through it. She realizes that the parasites within Suen are already asleep. To ensure the safety of the organization, intending to kill the mutants. Ji yeah. Suk is stabbed by a parasite. He knows he can escape this fate. He tackles Kyung Hee to buy time for Kung Wu. Suen grabs Kung Wu and they go downstairs to escape. As the sky starts to brighten, the operation at the police station begins. Captain Choi remembers Suen's warning. So, while riding the elevator, 
she cuts Jaws's hair to test it, she sees that the hair doesn't wither, she breathes a sigh of relief, and becomes even more convinced that Suin is deceiving her. Unexpectedly, Captain Choi receives another call from the other party. Kamu and Suin try to stop her from falling into the trap. Captain Choi says, I have already tested Johnson, he is not a monster. Kamu feels puzzled upon hearing this, that's impossible, I saw him with my own eyes, he killed the hound with a knife. This statement alarms Captain Choi, if it was a parasite that killed the hound, it would have used its tentacles, they wouldn't use an iron knife. Captain Choi asks Kan Wu to play the recorded conversation. If I meet an unfortunate end, take the recorded conversation with you, and find a police officer named Kim Sang Su. Shortly after, the sweep team raids the nest, and kills all the parasites inside. As Kyun He passes by, she sees the old police chief killing their own kind. She feels betrayed. The old police chief's action is to ensure the safety of the music festival. Captain Choi, seeing the mission's success, she tells Suin, there might be only you, a parasite, left in this area. Kamu hands up the phone. The two of them can't figure it out. Why would the old police chief slaughter his own kind? Just then, a poster of the mayor attending the music festival catches the attention of Kang Wu and Suin. A speculation arises in their minds. Could it be that the parasite wants to take over the mayor's body? The guesses of the two people are correct. The old police chief has targeted the mayor's position. If the parasite can become the new president of South Korea, it can have more power to expand its influence. Johnson can also become a member of parliament. The next day, the police department holds a press conference. The old police chief announces, the monsters in the county have been mostly eliminated. Only two monsters remain. It doesn't affect the folk music festival at all. To help raise awareness among the citizens, the police department will publicly reveal the identities of the two monsters. After the old police chief finishes speaking, photos of Suen and kyung -hee are released. After kyung -hee sees the news, she proactively contacts kang -woo and the others. They arrange to meet at the botanical garden. The police chief exposing Suen's identity once again arouses suspicion from team leader Choi. The old police chief treats Suen almost like his own daughter. He was protecting her just a few days ago. How did he suddenly change? Completely disregarding Suen's well-being, the old police chief explains, compared to personal relationships, he prioritizes the safety of the citizens. After briefly dealing with team leader Choi, the old police chief hurriedly leaves. He realizes, he must find a way to deal with this woman. On the other side, Hai brings Kang Wu to the botanical garden. She knows this human resents Kyung Hee for killing his sister, so she orders Kang Wu to wait in place. She goes to meet Kyung Hee herself, and Kyung Hee's purpose for this meeting is to persuade Heidi to join forces and get rid of the old police chief. Heidi expresses that it's a trap. The old police chief gives a press statement. He wants to lure us to the music festival and create chaos, then sees the opportunity to take over the mayor's body. At this moment, Kang Wu quietly approaches with a dagger. Kyung Hee feels Kang Wu's actions are very foolish, knowing that he is no match with her, yet still rushing forward. However, ever since witnessing her own kind being killed, she can't understand Kang Wu's emotions. So even if the music festival is a trap, Kyung Hee still wants to kill the old police chief. The three of them share the same goal. They all want to eliminate the old police chief before he obtains privileges. The three of them temporarily form an alliance. Meanwhile, the old police chief, in order to distract Team Lee or Choi, directly reports to higher authorities. He claims to have discovered the traces of parasites in the city, hoping that Team Leader Choi will go there to eliminate them. His request is approved by the higher-ups. Team Leader Choi sets off with her team. On the way, Heidi calls her and informs her. Johnson is indeed not a parasite, but he is colluding with the leader of the parasites, helping the leader obtain the old police chief's body, and the two of them have targeted the mayor's position. Heidi expresses, we are on our way to the music festival to kill the leader of the parasites. If you're willing to help, come to the music festival and assist. After saying that, Heidi enters a sleep mode to conserve energy for the final battle. Many doubts flash through team leader Choi's mind. Finally, she orders to change the direction of the car. She decides to trust Heidi this time. Shortly thereafter, the three-person group arrives at the music festival venue because they can't sense each other's presence. So Kyung Hee and Heidi wait in the car. Kamu infiltrates the crowd to gather information. The mayor appears quickly. The old police chief has no hesitation. 
humans are not a match for parasites, so he walks into the crowd. Heidi senses the presence of her own kind. She immediately calls for Kyun Hee to act. Meanwhile, the old police chief has started a rampage. Just then, team leader Choi and her team arrive. She sees the figures of Heidi and Kyun Hee. She orders her subordinates to protect the mayor. She herself chases after Heidi with a weapon. The music festival venue is in complete chaos. Johnson pretends to protect the mayor. It takes the mayor and hides in a building. This scene happens to be witnessed by Kung Wu. He quickly calls for Heidi to come and help, but the two of them are intercepted by team leader Choi. Heidi instructs Kyun Hee to go ahead. She stays behind to deal with team leader Choi. Heidi takes down her opponent from the shadows, but she doesn't harm team leader Choi. She never intended to harm anyone. She just wants to survive. After saying that, Heidi leaves the scene, and team leader Choi finally gives up on capturing her. She returns to the music festival to command her team. She finds the corpse of the old police chief, realizing that his head is missing. At that moment, the head of the old police chief is in Johnson's arms. He seizes the opportunity and unzips, releasing the severed head to attack on the mayor's bodyguard. The parasite lunges at the actual mayor. Fortunately, Kyung Hee intervenes to stop it. Then Kang Wu catches up to protect the mayor. Kyung Hee entangles the leader. The parasite leader detaches from the host. It definitely can't hold on for much longer. Kyung Hee instructs Kang Wu to take the mayor and leave. She releases tentacles to push them away and topples shelves to block their path. <laughs> Just as she finishes speaking, Kyung Hee suffers a tragic blow, and the leader is also nearing the end of its endurance. It quickly takes over Johnson's body, and chases after the direction the mayor escaped. Upon hearing the sound, Kung Wu pulls the mayor and hides in a dark place. The leader extends its eye tentacles to survey the area from a high point. Kung Wu ignites the fireworks stick in the warehouse, trying to buy some time for Heidi, but the fireworks have no effect on the leader. The mayor is about to be taken over by it. Heidi arrives at the scene. Kung Wu takes the opportunity to lead the mayor away, leaving the battlefield to the two of them. The battle here is intense. Kung Wu doesn't leave Heidi behind. After he puts the mayor in a dedicated car, he runs back to the building. The parasite leader is no match for the mutant. It can win through force, so it starts persuading Heidi, hoping that mutants and parasites can unite. Together, they can fight against humans. Of course, the leader doesn't expect a few words. Can make Heidi change her decision. He just wants to attract their attention. Meanwhile, he can separates the main body and launch a surprise attack from behind. Fortunately, Heidi reacts quickly. She wasn't hit in a vital spot by the leader. She gets up and chases after the opponent into the exhibition hall. Team leader Choi suddenly appears. She doesn't know that Johnson has already been parasitized. She points her gun at Heidi. Little does she know, the leader takes the opportunity to escape the host. He quietly approaches her from behind. Heidi notices the leader's subtle movements. She swings her tentacle and hits the opponent. Team leader Choi sees the situation behind her through the glass reflection. She immediately cues Johnson. Heidi has reached her limit at this point. When Kamu runs over, she faints. After Heidi's rescue this time, team leader Choi helps hide Suen's mutant identity. Namil County gradually returns to normal. Suen continues to work and earn money. Kamu officially joins the great team. Just as everything is falling the right way, a Japanese man claiming to be a parasite expert appears. He is the protagonist of the original story, Itsumi Shinichi. He is only parasitized on his right hand. The story of the first season comes to an end. The pace is tight and the plot is smooth. Special effects of South Korea's monster are gradually improving. If you like my channel, please subscribe to me.